Hi everyone and welcome back to my kitchen. Today I have for you a very delicious Ukrainian recipe for potato, cheese, and bacon piroshki. These are savory deep fried hand pies that are filled with a creamy and cheesy filling dotted with smoky Canadian bacon, fried onions, and dill. So we're going to start things by making a really soft yeast dough, making that cheesy potato filling, deep frying these, and I love to serve them while they're still warm, kind of crispy on the outside, and then soft and creamy on the inside. These piroshki are too to die for. You can find piroshki all over Eastern Europe, Ukraine, Russia, some of the other countries, and with a variety of different fillings, some of my favorites are beef and cheese, braised cabbage, cheese, and apple. So I have those recipes and more on my website and in my cookbook, Beyond Borscht. Just head on down into the video description box for this recipe link and all my other links. Meanwhile, let's get started on this recipe. I'm going to get things started with the potatoes since they need to cook and then cool down to room temperature before we use them in our filling. So I have two and a half pounds of peeled cubed potatoes. I'm gonna bring these up to a boil on the stove top, cook them for about 15 to 18 minutes until they're fork tender, drain them, add our butter, and then we can let them cool down. And now I'm going to switch gears and make my yeast dough. I have one cup of whole milk. You wanna heat this milk until it reaches between 120 and 130 degrees Fahrenheit. And then add in one tablespoon of active yeast. Whisk that together and I'm going to let this stand for five minutes. Into a separate mixing bowl, I'll add in one third cup of melted unsalted butter. One large egg. and one teaspoon of salt. Two teaspoons of sugar. I'll grab my whisk and give this all a quick mix until the egg is well beaten. And after five minutes, I'm going to give my milk and yeast mixture a quick whisk and pour that in. I've measured out three and a half cups of all-purpose flour. I typically add about three cups into the dough and then the remaining half cup I use for kind of for dusting and for shaping the piroshki. And you wanna add in about half a cup, up to a cup at a time. Incorporate the flour slowly. And I first use my whisk to whisk it in there. And then as the dough starts to pull together, I'll switch over to a spatula. I'm going to dust my work surface generously with flour and then turn out my dough. It's still gonna be a little bit sticky at this point. Sprinkle it with extra flour as needed and then knead for about four to five minutes until a smooth elastic dough forms. With my dough nicely kneaded and smooth, I'm going to place it back into my mixing bowl. We'll cover it with a clean towel and then place this into a warm corner of the kitchen to let it proof for about an hour, hour and a half until it's doubled up in size. While this is proofing, I'm gonna show you how to make the rest of the filling. Into my drained potatoes, I'm going to add in half a cup of salted butter. Just kind of settle that butter down in there, let it melt. I'm going to add a little bit of half and half, or you can use cream. You want these mashed potatoes to be on the drier side, so not super creamy like you would if you were making mashed potatoes as a side dish. Mash these potatoes until they're nice and smooth. And then just set these potatoes aside to cool. You can even transfer them into a separate bowl and place them into the refrigerator so that they cool down faster. Next, I'll preheat a large frying pan over medium-high heat, add in a couple tablespoons of butter, add in one large diced sweet onion, and one cup of diced smoked Canadian bacon. Mix this all together, and then I'll saute this mixture for about seven to nine minutes until the onion is really tender and translucent. And once this mixture is done, I'm going to set it aside and let it cool down completely. All right, let's finish up our filling. So my potatoes have cooled. This onion and bacon mixture has also cooled. We'll drop it everything into a large bowl. Add in two chopped green onions, a couple tablespoons of fresh dill, a teaspoon and a half of salt, 
And by my husband's request, lots and lots of ground black pepper. Last, add in about two and a half cups of grated cheese. Today I'm using mozzarella cheese. You can also use white cheddar or even farmer's cheese for this recipe. And then just use your hands or a spoon and really mix everything together. With my filling all done and my dough proofed, it's time to make some piroshki. I am preheating some canola oil in a deep saute pan. I have about three quarters of an inch of oil. I'm preheating it to 300 degrees Fahrenheit over medium heat. And I recommend that you fry these and, and make these in batches. So I'll usually make about three or four of them. I'll fry them and then I'm making the second batch as that first batch is cooking. Let me show you how to make these. So we need to dust our work surface lightly with the flour drop the dough out and then we're going to divide this dough. You can make 12 or 16 piroshki with this recipe. And then divide the dough as evenly as you can. And you wanna make sure you keep the dough covered so that it doesn't dry out. And here's how you make them. So grab a rolling pin, roll out the dough. You don't want it to be too thin grab some of that potato filling and make sure your fingers are really nice and clean and make sure you're not getting any of the fillings on the edges we're going to bring this dough up and then pinch it down one side and then the other And I go back a few times over to make sure this dough is really well sealed because if it's not sealed properly, the filling and the cheese is gonna come out as these fry. I like to kind of flatten them by turning them over. Perfect, these are ready to be fried. Let's add in our first batch of piroshki. Drop them in carefully into the hot oil. And then we'll let these slowly fry for about four to five minutes uh, per side until they're a rich golden brown color. Flip them over and let them cook on the other side as well. And as my piroshki finish frying, I'm going to lift them out of the hot oil and place them onto a wire rack that I've set onto a baking tray. And I placed a paper towel underneath to absorb any of the excess oil. I absolutely love making piroshki at home. They are a childhood favorite of mine. I still love them so much and I love that you can make them with so many different flavors. I used to make them with my grandmother, my mom, now I make them at home. Such a nostalgic food for me. And you definitely wanna let these cool for a little bit before you uh, dig in to enjoy them. Check out that crispy um, dough on the outside and you break it inside. Oh, lots of cheese, bacon. This is gonna be so delicious. And while my last batch of piroshki are finishing up, I'm gonna go ahead and dig in because I love to eat these while they're still warm, fresh out of the oil. For the full list of ingredients and the written instructions, don't forget to head on down into that video description box and follow the link over to my website. I'm also going to include a baking instruction for these online too. Oh, these look so good. Mmm. <laughs> mm. So incredibly delicious. I love the texture of the dough on the outside. It's really nice and crispy. On the inside, super soft. And then that cheesy, creamy potato filling. Oh my goodness. Mm. Mm -hmm. 
These pinochki right here satisfy all of my Ukrainian food cravings. So much incredible flavors from the um, fresh dill, the sauteed onion, the smoky Canadian bacon, everything. Everything about these pinochki is amazing. Mm. And these also make for a really great lunch or snack for the next day. You can always reheat them in the oven. You guys are gonna love this recipe. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a big thumbs up and a comment down below. I love to hear from you guys, and I'll see you next time with a new recipe.